Welcome. Let's get started on section 3.5. 3.5, multiplication rule, complements and conditional probability. We're going to use complements in this lesson. They're going to be helpful for these kind of probabilities, so don't forget them. Um, let's do an example. For the following problem, we're going to use two dice. What is the probability that the sum will be at least four? Stop and think about that. At least four, that means we can have a sum of four, four, five, all the way up to some 12. That's a lot to find out. We could do it, but it might be quicker to do it by the complements. So in the green, we can see we could go through and find all the sums greater than three, but that would take a very long time. It's faster if you do it a different way. So you can look at the sample space, and, and I'm going to show you if we did the sample space, we could say, I have only three that are three or less. So if I subtract just those three from 36, then I can see my probability really quickly. So that's why we're going to use this complement idea where I'm going to take the one minus the probability that it's not um, greater than four. We have three sums that are. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's take a look at this example here. If a couple has three children, find the probability that at least one of them is a girl. We have G is the number of girls out of three children, and the probability that the number of girls is at least one, right? Greater than or equal to one. So we're going to use that idea. We're going to we're hearing that word at least once. We're going to take one minus no the probability of having no girls, and that would be um, a, a one out of eight. And you can see we have the probability written out here. I can also do it in a tree diagram, and you can see the eight possible ways using the tree diagram, and we can see all the ones that are at least one girl, if I can click on the right spot to, there we go, of all these that are circled are the ways that could possibly have one girl. The only one that's not in that mix is the, if I had all three boys. So that's why we have seven out of eight. So visuals. Um, let's do this problem. Find the following probability. You have a bag of marbles that contain 12 red, 13 blue, 8 black, and 7 yellow marbles. You are performing an experiment where you draw a marble from a bag, write down its color, and then replace it in the bag. You'll be drawing 10 marbles. What is the probability you draw at least one marble? And I want you to hear that at least one marble. That is your cue to look into using the complements. So let's practice this, take a look at it. We're going to name Y the event as the number of yellow marbles. So the probability of getting at least one that's more than one or equal to one um, yellow marble would be the complement of getting no yellow marbles. One minus the probability of, of um, no yellow marbles. So we want to um, take that probability. How do we get 33 out of 40? And maybe you've already noticed. Well, there are 33 um, marbles in the bag that are not yellow. So out of the 40 marbles, we've got the, the 12, if we add the 12 and the 13 and the 8, that is a total of 33. And then uh, the total number of marbles in the bag are 40. Why did we multiply this by, or raise it to the 10th power? Because we're doing this experiment 10 different times. So we would take this 33 um, over 40 10 times. That's how many times, remember, we're, it's an independent probability we're replacing that marble back in the bag. Conditional probability is when you have, um, let me just read what it says, occurs when the probability of an event is affected by the knowledge of other circumstances. Let me say it in a different way. It's beginning with a problem with a condition. 
you're going to, <laughs> that's right what the definition says, but you're going to say, um, find the probability of me getting a red card given that I have jacks. Okay, so how many red cards, just jacks, and so, oh, I'm only giving the four jacks, and then I'm what's probably getting a red out of that, and hopefully you're like two, because there's a jack of hearts, and there's a, a, a jack of diamonds, those are the reds, so anyway, that's the conditional probability, this is the definition, and on your note sheet, you can see um, the notation, the probability of B, given that A, that's how you read it, is equal to the probability of B and A, meaning that they occur together at the same time, so that's the intersection, divided by the probability of, of A. And notice the probability of A is the what your denominator is. That's your condition. So that, write that definition down. So here's an example of, of a conditional probability when drawing a card from a regular deck of playing, playing cards. And I'm just noticing I made a mistake in this. Um, I'm going to pause this and see if I can fix it right now. Okay, I fixed it. it. It should say, when drawing a card from a regular deck of playing cards, find the probability of drawing a 2 given that the card is red. And so this is a conditional probability. You're hearing that language given that the card is 2, or red, sorry. So this is going to be the red cards on the bottom. So the probability of getting a red card, there are 26 out of 52 cards. Half a deck is red. And then um, what's the probability of getting a 2 um, given that it's red? So here, well, how many are 2s? Are We've got two, uh, four 2s, two that are black and two that are red. So that's where we're getting this two up here. These are the number of twos that are red. So two and red. We have the two of heart and we have the two of diamond. Those are our two red cards. So that reduces to two over two over 26 reduces to one over three, 13. So let's Let's take a look at this with a contingency table. Here's our Titanic information in a contingency table. If you select one person at random, what is the probability that the person survived given that the selected person is a man? Now listen to that. We're given, given that it's a, a person is a man. So with that, let's see if I can click here in the right spot again, trying to find that area. Where is it? There we go, okay. So we're gonna X out everything that's not men. We're only looking at the men, so we're given that it is men. So that's why we have here, so we're looking at this. Then it says surviving men, all right? So surviving men, we only can pick from the men. Here are the surviving men. So I'm gonna reveal the answers and using that definition. Here we got the probability of survived, given, man. Okay, so we're going to have the probability of a man is down at the bottom. What's the probability of being a man? 1,692 out of the total. And what is the probability of a surviving man? That's where we get the 332 out of the total. So we have 0.196, which if we wanted to write it as a decimal, that would be 0.196 as a uh, fraction. We have it already, but as a um, percent, you'd move that decimal over two places to the right and have 19.6%. So let's give a chance for you to do this one. You try it now. Pause the video and see if you can answer this. It's a little different. It says, this time, what is the probability that the person is a man given that this person survived. It kind of sounds the same, but it's not. Pause the videos, try it, coming back, I'm gonna show you the answer. How did you do? Notice we are given that the person survived. So I'm crossing out the died and the total and just looking at the surviving people. So we got 
706 surviving people. How many men survived? And so that's why we're just looking at the men surviving. That's where we get this 332 over the 706. Right. Sometimes we can use sample spaces. So I wanted to show this example for such cases. If a couple has two children, what is the probability they have two girls given at least one of their children is a girl? So this is a conditional probability. Um, and we have the at least in there. And I'm taking a look at and showing all the prob the sorry, the sample space. And I could have used a tree diagram. I just wrote them all out. And so if we know the condition is at least one of the children is a girl, notice I X'd out the boy boy. And so from there, what's what's the probability of getting two girls? You have one chance out of the total of three left. And if you did it straight up with a math, you can see that there you got a one-fourth chance of getting two girls divided by three-fourths chance of getting at, um, at least one girl. So using sample spaces can be helpful. I want you to use the sample space for this problem. Give that a try. If a couple has three children, what is the probability they have two girls given they have at least one girl? So write out the sample space. Start with the given they have at least one girl. So you're going to eliminate the extraneous data. And then what is the probability of having two girls? Okay, I'm going to show the answer. So pause the video if you have not already. Here it is. Did you get three out of seven? Here is the sample space. We got eight possible different um, combinations of boys, girls, for eight children. How do I know there was eight? Because remember, you're going to take two ways of doing each child. So two to the third power, or two times two times two is eight. So we got eight different ways and writing all the different combinations out. So what's the probability of at least one girl? There's seven different ways of getting either one or two or three girls. So that's seven ways on the bottom. And then how many of those give me two girls? And I've got the three on the bottom are the combinations for getting two, two girls. Um, our assignment is here. I'll write it down. Please put it on a piece of paper, submit it um, for feedback. And remember, you can check out that answer key that's in Chapter 3. Um, I'm going to go over a couple. I see i got a couple minutes left um, in the assignment, so I'm going to pick a couple. Here's number 7. If you roll a die five times, what's the probability of getting at least 1, 6? Um, you want to pause it and give it a try, and then we're going to show the answer. This is using complements, so you could say what's the probability of not getting any um, sixes, and so there would be five ways not getting the six. And we're doing this five times, so that's why I'm multiplying it out five times, or I can raise it to the fifth power. So when I do the complements, I get either 0.598 or 59.8. Last one I want to look at really quick is number 24, 23. Um, for this one, find the probability that 25 random people share no birthdays. Um, you're going to have 365 days that you can choose from the first birthday. Okay. Once that birthday is taken off the calendar, now you got 364 more um, ways out of 365. Okay, take that, that date out of the calendar and do that all the way down to 25. So you notice we have the three, this is the first person here, and then you got the second person, and then the third person, all the way down to the 25th. So we're going to take this down, multiply those together, these other different ways you can do um, the first birthday and the second birthday and the, and the third 
person, um, et cetera.